for this wonderful opportunity to talk about our project today. And I will talk about different techniques of the optical imaging and how we apply these techniques to investigate the um, mechanisms of encoding of place and um, objects in this place. So it is well known that our brain contains the different systems for the special coding and these systems are uh, contains the place cells uh, very well described the that marks the different distant planes, places in the environment that these systems contain the grid cell systems that marks the uh, just the grid of the environment as well as the border cells as well as the head direction cells and uh, on the bottom part of this uh, picture we can see the very complicated uh, system of different brain, brain structures uh, involved in such special coding and of course uh, one of the central structures is the hippocampus and connected to the hippocampus different um, cortical areas as, um, such as internal cortex, external cortex and others. And uh, often in this work, the uh, explored environment is not empty. It contains different objects such as water rewards or something else like the uh, leathers. And also in this experiment, despite the fact of the place coding, it was shown that of course the animals pay their attention to this object. And if this object is significant for, uh, as um, in this example with the nest, um, it also was shown that there are the uh, vector cells that code the direction and direction vector to these uh, meaningful uh, objects, but still uh, the object coding in the uh, brain is not so well described. And there was the uh, article at um, previous year from the Moser lab, and there they found the specific object cells in the medial internal cortex, and they found that these uh, cortex can code the object, the size of the objects, and different um, place of the object, but uh, we don't know much about how the brain codes the different types of the objects and what happens if we use uh, somehow uh, uh, meaningful for animals objects. Uh, for example, some of them will be familiar and other will be known, novel and how in this case the brain can code these situations. And there was another bunch of the works uh, that showed that in the um, special recognition task, task in the object recognition task what, when animals have to uh, recognize and distinguish between different objects in different places. It was shown that uh, another brain structure as the retrosplenal cortex is particularly important for solving these structures. And based on these and on the in other studies, uh, we uh, proposed the idea that may there are uh, another um, code in the brain for about the object information. And here in this uh, work, we test the hypothesis that there are neurons in hippocampus and retrosplenal cortex that encode special and object uh, information respectively. On this slide, you can see the whole hippocampal and connected to the hippocampus cortical system. And the hippocampus is shown in yellow and uh, the retrosplenal cortex here is shown as the R30 and A29 uh, structure and is shown in the red. So they are also highly connected. So for this purpose, we uh, implied the novel object recognition task. It is very well described task where the, um, we use the uh, mouse interesting to some novelty. And uh, at the first stage of this task, the mouse just explored the uh, some new environment with uh, objects placed there and uh, often at the first stage these uh, two novel objects are identical and then we can change either the type of the object like here for example from the rectangular to triangular and this will be the memory about the object type or we can displace uh, one object uh, to another spot in the environment like here, but the object time will be familiar. So this is the new object place memory. And we use the uh, several optical imaging techniques in this task uh, and to record the neuronal activity of CA1 uh, region of the hippocampus and retrosplenial cortex with uh, genetically encoded calcium indicator GCAMPS6S. Uh, uh, so, uh, on the first uh, 
part, uh, we performed the fiber optic uh, photometry technique to record the activity of C1 and RSC. Uh, for this purpose, we injected the AV uh, vectors carrying these uh, genetically encoded calcium indicator to the retrosplenal cortex as well as to the C1 uh, region of the hippocampus and also we implanted in the structures to uh, optic fibers and then uh, by using the photomultiplier we were able to detect the accumulated fluorescent signal from these two structures and this means that we detected the cumulative activity of uh, some number of neurons in these two structures. And on this video, uh, I hope you can see the video file. You can see how it goes on. So the mouse in, is in this uh, new environment and it can actively explore these two new objects here and here. And during this exploration, we can record the activity of the um, brain structures. And uh, I don't have time to stop um, deeply on this part of the work, but the most interesting thing uh, we found here was the specific decrease in the RSC um, activation during the object exploration compared to the special exploration. So during these periods when the mouse was actively um, exploring, sniffing, risking these objects, there was the significant decrease of these um, RSC activity and the details you can see tomorrow uh, on the poster presentation by our student Olga Ragoznikova. So please uh, uh, see, uh, come and see the details. So after that, we performed uh, optical imaging of the activity of distant neurons in the RSC and C1. And for RSC, we used the two photon microscopy technique. And for uh, C1 registration, we used the mini microscopy technique with the uh, minops and with the miniscopes. And the two photon microscopy technique requires that the mouse head is uh, stably fixed uh, under the uh, microscope to be, for us to be able to detect the neurons and uh, this is why we uh, had to standardize the whole experiment. We decided to use the mobile home cage setup. In this setup the uh, mouse head is uh, fixed and uh, this is the cage that is airlifted and the mouse with its paws can move the cage. So sorry for Russian uh, here but on this video you can see how it goes on. So you can see the microscope objective, you can see the mouse and you can see that the mouse can uh, normally perform the normal behaviors like freezing like here, um, sniffing, uh, it will be later. This is sniffing, this is whisking, it can explore the walls, uh, it can uh, perform the active exploration and run with uh, great velocity here. So this is uh, a good setup to for our behavioral task and uh, this is the experimental design of the novel object recognition and object place recognition tasks in this mobile home cage. So first we uh, adapted the mouse to move in this uh, home cage uh, from three to four weeks. Then we performed the empty mobile home cage session. Then we inserted the special landmarks. Then there was the session with the two new objects, then the same objects, then we uh, replaced one object with the object of a new type, like here, then again the same objects, and then we displaced one object to a new spot, and the period between these uh, sessions was one day, so all of these uh, memories, if we tested it here, was long term. And this is how it looks like in reality. And we have two counterbalance group with different objects and change them in a different m manner. So, and uh, it was important for us to check whether this uh, task was really, uh, whether the mice in this task can be really su successful and form the uh, memories. And yes, we showed this here. So this is the time spent in sectors uh, in these uh, sessions when we have the displaced, uh, when we have the new object type. And you can see that they prefer to be in this sector and they prefer to sniff this novel object. And the same you can see on these preference graphs. And the same goes for the place memories when we compare 
compare these two situations when we just replace, uh, displace this uh, object to another spot. And you can see that the mice uh, prefer to spend time in this sector with a new object and to sniff this object. And the same goes uh, with these uh, preference graphs. So as we see that our behavioral task is uh, successful, we um, started the optical register this is the whole setup for the Invista registration of the CA1 uh, activity. You can see this uh, whole movie of how this uh, cage is moving and also the more close uh, registra video registration by this mobile phone to uh, detect the nose and whisk uh, of the mouse when, it's, uh, uh, when the mouse approaches these objects in the mobile home cage. And, uh, we detected uh, from five mouse at about um, more than 800 neurons. And we also from these neurons uh, detected uh, at about uh, 500 neurons with the significant cal calcium events. Uh, and I call in this presentation calcium events like a spikes just for more short uh, term. This is not real spikes, uh, of course. And you can see that the number of neurons that have these uh, specific uh, calcium events from only in one any session to two any sessions and to six, all six sessions is rapidly decreasing. So this means that the special codes and that the activated cells are uh, just really changed over the, uh, our behavioral sessions and only four cells uh, were active and showed some significant calcium events in all six um, all six uh, sessions. So this means the changes in the whole uh, um, code of the C1 hypocampus through these uh, six sessions. And also we divided our neurons to the low active and high active uh, depending on the uh, their average activity through the whole sessions and uh, whether this uh, activity was higher or lower than the median activity. And you can see that uh, almost everywhere there is the um, same number of the low active and the high active cells, but here in the last two sessions there are more high active cells and uh, now we don't know uh, so what's going on. Then we also calculated the, the Z-score and for this calculation we take this uh, time of the object zone entry. So we have the uh, all types of all times uh, of the object zone entry and we aligned the activity of the neurons with the calcium events to this uh, time of different uh, zone entries. And you can see that there are the three uh, population, three groups of such neurons, those who start to be uh, more active after the zone entry and those who start uh, who start to be less active, so to be uh, maybe inhibited after the zone entry, and some kind of the neutral population. And this is the session uh, number two where we uh, placed two identical novel for mice objects. You, you can see that uh, at about 15% uh, both activated and inhibited neurons and a lot of uh, neutral neurons and the same for the second object. And uh, on the next session, when these objects uh, were already familiar for the mouse, we, same, all, we, see, we can see uh, almost the same picture for these two familiar objects. And uh, then we can look on these uh, Z-score results uh, aligned to the object uh, zone entry in the sessions four, where we um, replaced the familiar object with the object of a new type and you can see that there are no differences and then when we just displaced one object to a novel place you can see that there is the uh, increase in the perso percent of the inhibited neurons for the uh, object in the familiar place but the same picture as usual is for the object for a new place then we uh, analyzed the um, um, these uh, specific calcium events and we analyzed, uh, we did it in a single cell manner, so we analyzed the activity of each neuron and we were able to found the specialized neurons that were specialized uh, 
in the in some locations. So they did uh, perform these specific calcium events only in a specific location. Uh, in this case, these are some kind of the sector, like here or like here. And you can see that uh, we were able to find uh, different numbers of these specialized cells. And the most, uh, the biggest number of the special, specialized cells were found in the first session when there was no objects at all. And this, is, this was the first time the animal uh, uh, was introduced to this novel environment. And then uh, through the sessions when this uh, environment was not so novel anymore, the number of specialized cells uh, decreased and it was at about from 20 to 10 in different sessions. And here we can see the examples of the place fields of such specialized cells in different uh, sectors. So this uh, is the patterns of the walls of the visual kills. Uh, keys on the walls, uh, different stripes, rooms, or checkered. And you can see that, uh, and these are uh, uh, vertically, we can see the sessions from one to six. So one is the session without any object. And you can see a lot of specialized uh, about the place cells here. And uh, here in any other session, we can also find this cell. Else. But what is very important about the cells here that there is no uh, binding of them to some objects. So the hypocampus C1 hypocampus uh, cells just code the environment, the uh, special environment as it without any uh, attention to different objects. So or if we change the object type or if we move the object, this is just the uh, special coding as uh, was uh, showed a uh, number of time uh, previously before us. So uh, next we move to the to photon uh, microscopy and to uh, register the calcium activity of the RSC. And this is the whole setup. So this is the mobile home cage. This is uh, the bunch of cameras to uh, video the mouse behavior. This is how it looks like. So the mouse again can uh, normally explore the uh, cage, the object in the cage. And this is how we simultaneously record the calcium activity of the RSC neurons. Um, so, um, and we also were able to detect like at about 500 neurons from three miles and uh, at about uh, 300 uh, neurons with the significant calcium events. And we also see the same patterns uh, in, as in the C1 with the low active and high active cells in the RSC. And uh, next, we also perform these uh, populational Z-score analysis. And uh, we can see that in the session two with the two identical new objects, if we um, sum together objects one and two and the entries to the um, object one and two zones, we can see a comparable number of the activated and inhibited neuronal populations and uh, also a lot of neutral cells that doesn't react to this object zone entry at all. And here is the most interesting thing about the RSC populational code. So you can see that when we uh, have the new object, uh, the object of the new time, so there is a significant amount of cell is activated here uh, comparing to the familiar um, familiar object and you can see that these cells are uh, recruited from the uh, neutral cell pool and there is no difference and no changes uh, if we are talking about the object in a new place. So we can see the, some significant reaction of the uh, retrospinal cortex uh, neurons to the object as, uh, of a new type. So uh, we didn't finish yet the single cell analysis for the uh, retrospinal cortex. So this is um, what we are doing next. And um, of course, the project is not finished yet, but uh, what we can say so far. So we did find the location specialized cells in the C1 region of the hippocampus. And as far as they know, we know, this special, special, specialization, sorry, did not depend on the position and type of the object in the uh, mobile home cage. So we can conclude um, that from our work uh, and as we can um, 
say previously, the hippocampus encodes information about the space, including objects in it, but regardless of their type or position. So we didn't see any changes in the hippocampal cell activity uh, due to the different object types or due to the changes in the object position. And we also find uh, the directed changes in the RSC neuronal activity during the object exploration and more specifically in relation to a new object. So uh, these results so far, of course, they are not uh, finished, support the initial hypothesis about the uh, independent encoding on, of information about space in the hippocampus and about objects in the RSC. And uh, looking forward, uh, what we are going to do, of course, we are going to analyze the specific calcium events of distant neurons in the um, RSC to find whether there are some uh, specializations of these neurons to the objects or maybe to the uh, objects of a new type or something like that. We are also going to perform the deep analysis of the behavior to find uh, uh, and to describe the history of such uh, specialized cells in the hippocampus and in the RSC. So this is maybe the answer to, to the question, uh, what did go on before this cell uh, become to be specialized? And also uh, we're going to perform the analysis of C1 and RSC synchronization by the fiber optic photometry technique. So this is uh, what, what's going on uh, next. And of course, here yeah, I want to thank uh, with a big pleasure the my colleagues and there is a big team and the Ksenia Toropova and Ekaterina Kolikova, they made this behavioral task in the mobile home cage uh, possible. Viktor Plusnin, Vladimir Sotskov and Alisa Tiaglik performed the Invista uh, experiments and the uh, analysis. Anna Gruzdeva and Daria Dubinina participated in the uh, two photon microscopy experiments. Olga Rogozhnikova performed the fiber optic photometry. And again, please uh, see her poster. Ilya Fedotov and his colleagues from the physical department of the Moscow State University uh, made uh, these uh, fiber optic photometry experiments possible. And of course, uh, any of this will not be possible without the guidance of the Konstantin Vladimir Chanohin. So thank you. And this work, this project was supported by a bunch of big grants by the um, Russian Foundation for the Basic Research. So thank you for funding and thank you very much for uh, listening to me today and I will be happy to answer the questions. Olga, thank you very much for your talk. And uh, actually we have at least questions uh, and from Valeria uh, Simunina. Valeria, can you hear us? Valeria. Okay, okay, I, I, can, I can read it. Uh, what was the frame time in two photon scanning? Uh, so the, um, sorry, I, I don't remember the... Um, okay, okay, no, this is a, like technical issue. So I, will, can... I will answer in the, yeah, um, uh, in, in in the chat, sorry. Okay, okay. so uh, other question from Evgenia Pushina. Evgenia. Uh, Olga, thank you very much for the very, very interesting presentation. And uh, um, it is really very good that in our country, the NVISTA system actively use it in the mice. Thank you very much for this. And I have a one, uh, one question. So what, top, uh, well, what type of mathematical processing you use? Is it use a um, um, uh, mosaic system for the mathematical uh, uh, um, equipment of your uh, results or no? So we did uh, try uh, a lot of different uh, processing uh, systems and it was mosaic and here we use partly mosaic and also we uh, try to, uh, we try to um, apply different uh, right uh, um, systems like the, um, that was right, uh, written by different um, from different labs or on the Python and so on. But still, the part of this was done by the Mosaic system. Uh, thank you very much. 
and I was the uh, little methodological uh, questions about the incorporation and vista in the mice brain, and uh, um, uh, what uh, I, I think that in your in your groups, big uh, groups with uh, a lot of um, young um, specialists um, who. Um, uh, um, who prepare the mice with the NVISTA system? So, uh, in our group, the, uh, this experiment was done uh, by Vlad uh, Victor Plusnin and uh, Alisa Tjaglik, uh, who is not uh, more in our lab, so he moved to, she, sorry, she moved to um, another lab. And Victor Plusnin performed the um, this uh, Invista implantation for, for this work as well. And uh, he has a poster here also on this conference about other project with the Invista. So uh, the big part of this work was done by this. And uh, of course, uh, this is um, a complicated technique, but our students can also learn and perform such implantations. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Olga. And next question from Janna Nagornova. Janna. Janna, okay. Так, ну тут по-русски. Проводили ли регистрацию через несколько недель на первоначальных объектах, на первоначальных локализациях? Насколько устойчива активность нейронов? No, we didn't. Uh не проводили. Мы делали вот этот эксперимент, и потом у нас нет данных о том, что происходит, хотя, конечно, это очень интересный вопрос. Thank you. Uh, and next question from Karen Simonian. Uh, okay, we cannot turn on the sound. And the question is uh, what about your compulsive uh, how does an enriched environment impact hippocampus city treatment? So, um, yes, the CA2 is uh, less known, less described subfield of the hippocampus, and we um, by ourselves didn't work and didn't perform any experiments on the CA2, but we know that uh, different uh, studies by Susumu Tinigada and uh, other people in the world showed that there is also plasticity and it can be, uh, they can be showed the uh, specific uh, neuronal activity due to the um, novel um, exploration of the novel environments and so on. So it can be also uh, described as the enriched environment. Mm -hmm. Спасибо. Спасибо. Ну, по-моему, больше вопросов у нас нет. Я не вижу поднятых рук. Наверное, кто-то захочет, то уже 